Good evening and welcome to United Real Therapy, people. How are we doing? Big up to everybody who's here in the house. Stephanie already, mm -hmm. early bird and all that. Big up Stephanie Griffin. Uh, big up. Big up Stephanie. <laughs> he likes. There we go. Jarvis. Big up Jarvis. Big up Lesso. Hopefully some of the people might join us. But welcome to the preview Manchester United. Well, Brentford faces Manchester United. And we, we remember where we were last season. Woo! Mm. Last season we were in trouble. Really trouble last season. So big up to everybody. Love and like. And uh, yeah, how are you doing, Jarvis? You well? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Easter holiday. Yeah, uh, happy Easter. Work. Happy yeah, Easter, by the way. Happy thank Easter you. to everybody. Thank happy you. Easter. Yeah, it's it's good. It's good now. The sun is shining. Everybody in Norway out skiing now, eating uh, oranges, eating a, a chocolate called the quick lunch, and uh, just hiking. So so this is uh, one of the big, best biggest holidays in Norway, actually. Wow. Everybody goes to their cabin, to the mountains. That's the thing. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So congratulate. Well, big up to all the people in Norway, man. Enjoying the Easter holidays in the cabins, in the, in the snow and everything else. In the UK, we have a bank holiday. We have a bank holiday in the UK, so. Oh. I'm just going to silence less because we're getting a bit of a feedback. There you go. Better. Uh, so, yeah. Big up. Big up. Love and light. Big game, absolutely big game tomorrow. A huge game for Manchester United season for what could be in the less of the season. So big up and big up to our Claire. I've got to mute you one second, Lesto. Just bear with me. Let's get in some feedback. Um, big up to our Claire, Queen of the Chat. Our Claire, good evening all. Just a quick hello. I love uh, love a light nerd in a hey, Jarvis. Big up to you. Yeah, I just asked Lesso, how are you doing, bro? You good? Yeah, I'm all good. I'm all good, man. I mean, we also uh, in uh, celebrating the Easter, um, you know, uh, weekend and everything. Um, the country is like is uh, mad crazy over the holiday, and yeah, um, big up to you guys as well. Uh, <laughs> Big up Jarvis um, as well, um, and to the viewers as uh, watching at home. And um, yeah, let's have a wonderful show. We've got a lot to discuss. Big up Lesso, man. Big up. Yeah, we're sorting out the echo. Thanks, Claire. Big up, Master Jinder's in the house. So we've got a lot to discuss. We've got a bit of a jam-packed show for you tonight. But yeah, big up to all my peoples worldwide celebrating Easter, especially to my southern. African siblings, love and light always to them. Love, light, liberation to everybody, wherever you are in this world. Um, we've got a jam-packed show for you tonight, like I said. Jam-packed, bit of a jam-packed, people. Let's go. Um, we're going to be talking about Kobe. We're going to do the preview. We're going to be talking about Kobe and why we need to stop the hype because you know what the UK media are like. Mm -hmm. You know, they always want to build somebody up and tear them down. I'm getting sick of the transfer PRBS already. And Ineos are a joke already. <laughs> hey, Ineos with their PR. And now, yesterday, we hear the story that Dan Ashworth <laughs> is no more. So, yeah, it's, it's embarrassing what Ineos are doing right now. Um, but, yeah, people need to get a grip. We need at least seven points from the next three games. Yeah, I agree. Agree, definitely agree, um, Claire. We need, yeah, that's a minimum, Manchester United, if we try to rescue the season. Um, he's generational, but we don't need to overhype him, bro. Uh, yet we, we don't need to overhype him because, um, yeah, it's a bit too much, man. You know what they're like. You know what the British media are like, football media. There are any one little bad performance, any little mistake as an 18 year old, they're going to jump down his throat. So we don't need that. Big up Nerdy, big up Steve Couple, man. Love and like people. Please smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed, people. We're shadow banned. We are demonetized. This is how it is when we shout for the Palestinian uh, cause, specifically for the Palestinian cause. This is why we're shadow banned. 
We're not shouting mm-hmm. because we're shouting, you know, we're talking about the, the, the Congolese cause or the Sudanese cause. It's specifically because this is what this country is. This is what this country and Western um, social media and Western institutions are like. They want to silence people who are advocating for Palestinian humanity and Palestinian human rights. But mm. we'll take it by any means, any little platform that we've got, we're always going to be standing in total solidarity with people of Gaza and people of Palestine and people of Congo, people of Sudan, people in Ogaden, people in the Tigri region in East Africa as well, and anywhere else where people are getting oppressed. Love, light, liberation to all. But let's get into it. Let's get into it, people. Let's get into it. This is the bit of the breakdown. So let me just give you my little script here. Brentford defender Sergio Regulion is suspended following his red card against Burnley two weeks ago. Uh, Brian Umbermo is in the line for the first time since December. Ethan Pinnock and Christian Norgard remain out. Manchester United could welcome back defender Lissandro Martinez, who's been missing since the start of February with a knee injury. Harry Maguire returned from England due early with this uh, will be assessed. Amadiolo ser- serves a one match ban. Okay. Uh, match facts Brentford have won only one of their past 10 past meetings with Manchester United in all competition, drawing one, losing eight. The victory came in the fixture last season, 4 0 win, with all four goals coming in the first opening. 35 minutes. Boy, do we not forget that. <laughs> Wherever you are, United fan, the first 20 minutes, I think it was 25 minutes was 3-0. 35 minutes, it was 4-0. You're not forgetting that. Brentford tally of 10 points from their last 18 Premier League games is the lowest of any team in the division. The Bees have dropped league, uh, to a league 28 points from winning positions this season. Thomas Frank's side have kept just one clean sheet of their 14 home league matches so far, while only Sheffield United and Burnley have conceded more goals on their ground than Brentford. Uh, Brentford's 29 goals they've conceded. They've conceded 17-headed goals um, in their 29 games, more than any other side. Ava, Ava Anton is without a goal in his last five Premier League appearances, having scored four in his previous five. Manchester United, um, a 12 league defeat of the season Saturday would equal a record for a single campaign. Manchester United have lost 16 out of their 40 matches in all competitions this season. They have suffered 17 defeats in 89-90. 12 of their 15 league fixtures this season have been single goal margin. They have lost eight of their third, um, eight of their 13 most re, uh, most league visits to London. Winning two, drawing three. Uh, Rasmus Hoyland could become the youngest player to score in seven con- consecutive Premier League appearances, surpassing Joe Willock. Hoyland is the first United player since Cristiano Ryan to score six consecutive matches. Scott McTominay is one goal away from becoming the first Scotsman since Brian McClare in 1999-92 wow. to reach double figures of the season for Red Devils. So there you go, people. There you go. This is what we have. Smash that like, people. Smash that like. Happy Easter to everybody, wherever you are in this world. I'm going to go to you first, Jarvis. Yep. What say you hope do we have tomorrow? Obviously, it is a. it was an absolute mauling last season when we were there. You know, for me, the players have to redeem themselves. They have to go and get the victory. They have struggled. Brentford, Brighton have had the most injuries. I think they're number one and number two. Just try mm. to get my camera. They're number one and number two this season. So it's going to be really interesting and fascinating game tomorrow. How do you see it? <laughs> yeah, you mentioned a lot of good facts and um, and our performance last season was uh, was dreadful. Um we lost that game and, and everybody knew that uh, Ten Hag at that time, he um, he pulled the emergency break and changed his style. He tried to play a possession-based football, but uh, it didn't work. So um, it is what it is. But uh, tomorrow is another game. I, uh, we, have, uh, we, play in a, we play a different type of football at the moment. Uh, but the Brentford is a good team, you know. Even though they have lost a lot of games lately, they don't concede many goals. They usually lose two, one, and 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 they are still in the game all the time. So so they're not just just um, just um, 
giving up, you know, they, they're fighting, they're, they're doing their best. So, so there will be a game tomorrow anyway. And I think we have to fight for every centimeter on the pitch if you want to win. Um, we, we all know Ivan Tony is good, but uh, they have Wisa and Buemo, so they have a lot of good uh, forwards. Uh, I, I especially like the, the Danish guy, both Nurgor and Jensen. Both of them are, are good footballers. And uh, we, we know they have an, a, an astute manager, Thomas Frank. Uh, he can, uh, he can uh, figure out a lot of stuff. And, and you know, it's going to be a tough one. Um, but hopefully we, we will be up for it. Uh, but I'm a little bit skeptical. Maybe the players have had time to land after the Liverpool win, but you never know with these guys. They they are uh, usual butlers. They they know they know when to put up a, a fight and when to uh, when to cave in. And the Brentford game now will be a, a typical game for us to cave in and just just lose because we 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 don't give 110 percent and we're not focused when the game starts. So for me. It's it's a big job for Eric Ten Hag to get the players back on focus, back on track. Now we have had an international break. Uh, players have been all around the world. Now they're coming back. Are they taking the, a little bit too lightly on this? Or are they focused uh, to, to win the next game? Because we need to have a string of games now if you want to compete for the top five and, and, and actually qualify for the, for the Champions League because that's what we are trying to do. But um, I'm a slightly optimist. I think we can do it. And um, yeah, I'll keep my fingers crossed for tomorrow. A big up, Jarvis. Big up. Same question to you, Leso. What do you expect tomorrow? Uh, big up, Sean, in the chat. Make sure you check out his podcast at Sean, at How We See Things. Make sure you follow him at Sean Thomas. Yeah. Are you there, Nuri? Then? Yeah, I'm there. Go ahead, no. So, what do you think about tomorrow's game? Um, I mean, um, it's it's gonna be a tight game, man. Um, you know, um, when you when you look at the fact that um, Brentford as well, you know, they don't want to be dragged back into that relegation battle, so you know, they are going to try and keep things as tight as they could. They always play a 3-5-2 formation, so, you know, um, we can expect them actually trying to, you know, um, not be on the front foot. Um, they may try actually, uh, uh, you know, counter us, you know, because they do have, like, fast uh, players in terms of the counter attacks. You know, you look at Ivan Tony, you look at, um, um, as well as, um, I should call it, as well as uh, Wisa, um, you know, they, 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 they're players that actually like um, receiving, like in terms of, of uh, um, they're not position-based footballers. They're more like uh, their strengths that lie in the counter-taking game. So um, it's going to be tight. Um, um, and as well, they're missing players, man. Let's not forget this. I don't want to hear the injury excuse. Um, like we always do most of the time, you know, we always attribute this to injuries and whatnot. We should be trying to win that game. We don't have a choice. We cannot. We cannot drop points. Afford to drop points anymore. You know. You look at. Um, you look at uh, uh, Aston Villa. Aston Villa are nine points ahead of us already. You you have Spurs who are already six points. You know. So let's 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 not uh, sugarcoat this. We have to win every game as it comes. Um, we have to make make sure that we start off games very uh, very well. We need to score. Um, we need to defend well, which I doubt we will. I think we we will still continue uh, conceding a lot of shots. So, you know, um, we still haven't sorted out that uh, the whole low um, where we're playing, we're pressing up high, and then you know we're still playing low block at the same time. That needs to be sorted. Um, and yeah, man. Until then, I think uh, we we were just more reliant on us trying to you know individual brilliance and everything. I don't think we've learned. Uh, the Liverpool game basically masked everything that was wrong with us. You know, it's it's one of those freakish games that you're gonna get. Whereas, you know, they had players out as well. Let's not forget that they had a game in between um, as well during the week. So their players were basically um, tired from their previous game. So I'm thinking um, we should not 
overhype that whole matter and say, you know, we're back because we beat, we beat Liverpool, you know. We, we need to prove it now with these games. We need to go to Brentford. We need to win. And I'm, I'm hoping these guys will, will get a victory. I mean, we've won two games already in a row. So let's make it three and let's make it the fourth as well, you know, with the following game after this one. Yeah, big up. Uh, yeah, Ahmad is banned because the the whether it's in the yellow card, you get in the FA Cup of the league, you, st- you miss the game, you miss the next game. So Nick mm. Nash, no, it, it, that, that rule, I don't know if that was a rule before, but it's not now. He's missing the game because of the red card. So it's about the next game. It wasn't about the next cup game. It's about the next game he's missing, yeah. Uh, I just got this because this is uh, the second part. It's been put up already. So some quotes from the second part of Ten Hag's um, preview uh, press conference. He says, Ten Hag says, on rumours about managers, I don't care. My focus on the pros playing uh, playing at best level. Man United, there will always be noise around the club, the team, the manager, the players, and there will always issues coming, right? So he's t- it looks like he's taking it on the chin. I agree with you. So big up to you, um, less so. And uh, Jarvis, I mean, in terms of people, but apparently Manu may Kobe Manu is sick, so is Casemiro. They're both ill, apparently. So I don't know if they're going to play tomorrow, but apparently Lissandro Martinez will be back. Um, I'm guessing Arouan Basaka should start tomorrow. I don't want to see Lindelof anywhere near full back mm. areas. Um, what kind of a team do you think we're going to shape up tomorrow with? From what we're hearing, Casemiro and Menu are sick. Both of them are sick. So if both of them are out, does that mean Ericsson is going to come in? <laughs> Ericsson did play. Yeah. <laughs> but Ericsson is a good player, you know, but uh, it's his defensive, uh, you know, it's tracking back. That's his Achilles. And um, as long as we put the right players around Ericsson, he, he can work very well. But I see Ericsson more as a number 10. And uh, we all know that Bruno will play the number 10. So, uh, the, actually, I, th- I don't think there's room for Ericsson to play. I I, uh, I think we would see Amrabat if uh, if Maynou and uh, Casemiro is out in, in the six. Or McTominay, even. But I, I don't rate McTominay as a number six. But you never know with um, Ten Hag. Uh, he likes McTominay. We all know that. Uh, when it comes to the team tomorrow, mm-hmm. uh, I think it's too early to play uh, Martinez. I think Martinez is uh, shouldn't be rushed back. We all re- we all saw him uh, being rushed back uh, in the beginning of the season, injured again, and uh, it's not good. Um, I for, if it was up to me, I would just let Martinez be for the rest of the season and just to train himself up and be ready for next season, hundred uh, percent. Because your your muscles uh, weakens when you when you're out on injury. Even though if you if you train your uh, your right ankle or your uh, left knee or whatever, the other side isn't in balance, and that takes a lot of time. So this is one of the issues with rushing back players. And I don't trust our medical team, even if they say that he's ready, he's not. Oh, no, 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 no. Sorry, I'm just. Pointing to the person. Sorry, carry on. Yeah, when yeah, I yeah. do these people, I'm just pointing to the person. I agree with them. Go ahead. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, but uh, the usual. I would go with Varan. I would go with uh, Evans in the uh, centre backs. I would go with uh, with the available uh, full back, the uh, full backs, uh, Dallo and Fambisaka, I believe. The midfield is is the question. If Casemiro and Menu is out, I would probably start with Amrabat and uh, Bruno. The third option, Eriksson or McTominay. Uh, on the wings, we have Rashford, but I'm not sure about Rashford. We saw his form uh, playing for England. Uh, but Rashford will always play. And uh, on the other side, we have Garnacho and uh, Hoylun is back. So thank God he's back and, and he's so important for our play and, and how we how we uh, conduct ourselves on the pitch because he's a workhorse. He, he works all the time and he's so, so vital. So uh, if we have kept his form before the injury, I hope that we can see a couple of goals from uh, Hoylun uh, tomorrow. When it comes to Brentford, I think uh, we should be worried uh, a little bit 
because of uh, the strikers, uh, Visa and, uh, and uh, Ivan Tony. Uh, the midfield battle we should be able to win. The problem is uh, can we penetrate the defense? As Leso mentioned, they play with the uh, with the back three or a back five, whatever. And um, and uh, yeah, it should be it should be okay, but uh, it wouldn't be it won't be much space for Hoylund when he drops down to to receive the ball. There will always be a centre back on him all the time, and they will have two, so there will be no room to run into for uh, for McTominay and and Bruno. So that will be a little difficult. So we have to find another way. The best way to beat uh, beat the back three is is to play play the ball wide. So we have to to trust the Rashford to keep keep, keep his width. And uh, that worries me because he always liked to to uh, cut inside and, and try to shoot. So we will see. I hope Rashford will be disciplined tomorrow. How do you see it, Nordin? Yeah, I'm, I'm really thinking, yeah, the, the way to get at them, they're conceding a lot of goals, actually. And surprisingly, for the set piece, they're quite innovative in the set piece. They've been decimated, let's be right here. They have been absolutely decimated this season with injuries. And obviously the ban to their... Their best player, well, their best player and their striker, their main striker for large parts of the season, has not helped them either. How do I see tomorrow? Yeah, definitely. The best way to get uh, uh, the back five, uh, back three, is to get in between the wing backs and, mm. uh, and, the, and, the, and, and the two flank centre backs, is to find the gaps between them and to really have a go at them. Tomorrow is going to be very interesting. I mean, he only flew back, say, last night. Um, was it yesterday that he came back? A lot of the players came back. Look, they've been flying everywhere. So the first generate training session, I think, was yesterday yeah. properly for the squad to be together. The games are absolutely horrendous for the first game after the internationals. Majority of people don't understand that players flying everywhere. Players are not they're not machines, they're human beings. So players flying everywhere is gonna cost it's gonna cost the um aspect of them in terms of physicality, even though the professionals, they know how to recover. Plus, also, majority of players play different systems for their country. So mm. they've been training in a different way to the way that they train at home. And specifically, we're Manchester United, we don't really have a solid plan or solid way of playing. I expect the quality to be horrendous tomorrow, and I always forgive any team. Um, for what it is, after the international break, I always like, we just need to get the result. So tomorrow, I won't be, after the game, um, I'm going to do the match reaction tomorrow night. I won't be moaning too much. You won't find me moaning too much because I know that after the international, especially when it's two weeks, it, it takes a lot out of the players mentally, emotionally, physically. Mm. And plus, they've been used to playing in a different way with their countries. So, and also the amount of time that they have. So if this game was a Sunday, I would expect something different because I would think, come back on Thursday, Friday. Saturday, they've got three days to, to mm. kind of like put a plan together, but he's only had them till Thursday. They train today and tomorrow they're traveling for the game. So it's no it's not that much time. Do you know what I mean? It's not that much yep. time if you if you if you know what I mean. So mm. yeah, I don't really expect to be a great football, but the three points are vital tomorrow. Um let's so do you agree with what, what I'm saying to you? Don't um don't unmute yet because it's giving an echo. So when I when I be quiet, then you can then jump on uh, and answer the question. But do you agree with that? That the games, the quality dropped after the international games. Do you agree with that? I really noticed that the past couple of years. And I do actually, Gary, I saw a clip with Gary Neville where he was talking about that this international break needs to be scrapped because there's so much riding on the season still. You know, this Premier League season... It's there, especially for the people who are going for it, like Liverpool, Arsenal, City, big games on this weekend. Mm. But all and also all the other teams that are fighting for positions. And I think they shouldn't do it. They shouldn't do it. And if they do, they should only pick the B side. You know what I mean? And have one game instead of the two weeks. But do you agree that the football quality drops because players have not in uh, integrated well enough? have not had enough time to integrate in the training and everything else with their team. Plus, they've travelled, you know, miles and miles. I mean, Ganache come back from Latin America. Uh, Leech has come back from Latin America. So, it's crazy what's happening. But, yeah, let me know, bro.
Yeah, of course. Um, of course, it does um, play a factor, a huge factor. And I've also noticed this over the years, man. Um, you know, um, that's why you need, um, that's why they always say that you need a huge squad. You know, it's, it's for times like these. Man. You know, you need players. <clears throat> you know, of course, you, if you had a big team, you're going to have like internationals in, you know, as your starters and as well as your backups. But um, your backups have like more or less, they do rest, they do recover. And most of the season, they don't uh, really play like that as, as opposed to your starters. But um, yeah, uh, it, it always factors in, you know, players coming back from different regions, you know, they arrive, they don't arrive at the same time because obviously for different, con you know, certain players get back at certain times. So, you know, um, that's that's the curse, I'd say, and the 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 um, the do's and don'ts, rather, um, your negative and your positives in terms of um, the having a, a very diverse squad, you know, a squad from different types of places. So, um, yeah, uh, I I really don't expect us to, you know, uh, to uh, to to have a, a, a good way of playing. Um, for us to like turn up and do everything, I I just want a result at this point. I just need us doing what we need to do to get results, and I don't think a lot of people would be worried about, you know, um, a, a superb game because we know we know that this this takes a toll on players. You know, going from uh, international, and that's why um, I feel like even your your surprise results usually come around this time. When 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 um, players um, where where players come back from international break, you know you get your surprise results. You know you get maybe a city dropping points. You get even you know your your most informed teams do drop points after international break, and it's usually around that time. So um, yeah, it's it's tough, um, but we need to. There's no excuses. I feel like they need to still get the three points because you know Brentford also have people out. So. I, I, I'm, I'm only it's only three points for us you know we can't accept anything less we need to get seven points out of the next three games minimum you know in order for us to even have a slight chance because you look at the the fixtures that spurs have you know um their next game is against luton and they're playing before us so by the time we play there'll be nine points <laughs> with the game in hand with, with obviously with us with the game in hand but um, the most important factor would be us having to go there and getting a result ourselves. So it's not going to be easy, guys, but hopefully we do get over the line. <clears throat> hmm. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. You made some really good points there. Big up Sheikh Arian Rashid in the, in the chat. Big up to him with all the... all of the quotes, getting all of the quotes. Big up to him. We appreciate you. Always, always, King. We always appreciate you. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm definitely. This was the guy, the couple of the players that are back. Umberma, Umberma. The connection between the two people that did us last season was Umberma, mm. and and Ivan Tony. To be fair, um, obviously, no guard is injured. He's one of their best players. I think he's their club captain, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. He's injured tomorrow, but yeah. I'm really Pinnock. Um, Pinnock is a good player who's out. He was he was really good against us last last time. Ethan yeah. Pinnock, the centre back. Yeah, yeah, he's one of their best players. He's one of yeah. the best defenders. Yeah, yeah. And then obviously, I don't know if he's fit. What's his name? The guy used to play for Burnley. He's also scored against us last season. I forgot his uh, name. Ben Mee. Ben Mee. Yeah, I don't know if yeah, he's fit. Yeah, Ben Mee. Yeah. Yeah. I reckon how it was wonderful break. It was good to go with win into international break. Definitely with such a win. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. It's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> exactly what I said. There you go. Eric Tanak saying what I always say. Yeah. Players always play uh, different systems. Well, actually, uh, sometimes there was no system against uh, Liverpool. It was about who wanted it. Let's <laughs> mm -hmm. not get too giddy. But, yeah, Umberma is a danger guy. Umberma and Ivan Tony, without defence... I'm a bit... yeah, we have a little bit problem with the centre backs, but uh, there's, there's rumors that Lindelof will start tomorrow because Maguire is in doubt, Evans is in doubt, Martinez just back from injury. Then we are back to to Lindelof and Verana centre backs. Um, do you think that will be a problem tomorrow, Nuruddin? Oh, 
Oh, you're on mute. I hope Varane and Martinez are playing. I hope would you Varane and would, would you rush Martinez back to in the starting eleven right away? Yeah, he would get in if he's be, if he's been allowed to travel and train with the internet with with Argentinian team mm. and he's been taking part in the training, you know, match, you know, the for the for their games, then why not? He's ready. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, it's not about rushing him back. He, we could not play him and put him on the bench tomorrow, and then he'll, he'll play the next game and get injured. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. But the thing that worries me, you know, is this: you, you are out so for such a long time, and you know, he hardly played before he got injured again, and and now we're rushing him back. For me, I would like him to have ten minutes here, fifteen minutes the next game, and then maybe start just like ease him in gradually. Uh, but we're not at that stage. We are at the need to win uh, modus at the moment. We just need to win the next game, and this is important. Uh, but Lindelof compared to Evans or Maguire, it's like ah, uh, it's it, maybe we lose a couple percent, but it's not it's not super important. It's more yeah. it's a bigger loss that Mainu is out and Casemiro is out. How do we fix the, the midfield? That's that's the biggest issue for me. Um, if Amrabat starts McTominay, who knows? Uh, I I wouldn't like um, I wouldn't like uh, McTominay to start in the number six because uh, I don't rate him as a number six. He can't play with the back against the goal, and and this is his biggest problem. He he, he doesn't scout, and um, you know he had a good game against Liverpool, but that's higher up the pitch. You're allowed to do mistakes there. It's not that that uh, crucial, deadly. Oh, you're in. No, he's not back. He's on the phone. Yeah, but the, the biggest part for me is Hoyland. You know, Hoyland is back, and he he's so so important for the for the way we play. So for me, Hoyland is is uh, super important. And if I could choose, I would bench Rashford, but Diallo is is out then. But uh, Leso, are you are you muted or are you there? Sorry, guys. Apologies. Yeah. Apologies. I just had to take an important phone call. Big up people, yeah, these so people. Big up. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, the, I, I was just asking Diallo. He's he, he's suspended, isn't he? Suspended, yeah. Suspended for, tomorrow, yeah. For one game or for one game, yeah. Two oh, yellows, okay. one game. Two yellows against Liverpool, you get one game, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying to you. I, I'm definitely. If Martinez can play at least for 70 minutes, I would give it him 60 minutes tomorrow. I'm I'm, I'm not trusting Lindelof against Umbama and I'm not trusting them. And he could get injured. He could get easily injured, Martinez, mm. if he even did that 10 minutes here or there. Five minutes would bring him and get injured. So if he feels like he's fit and he's ready to play, I'll play him, me personally. Uh, yeah. yeah, big up to Shekharian. No, um, yeah. Like I said, they're ravished by injuries. They, surprisingly, like I said earlier, they're conceding a lot of goals. They conceded 17 goals of set pieces. And the only one who's really good on set pieces is Casemiro. <laughs> mm. So we need Casemiro to get better ASAP. Him both men who are feeling ill. Mason Mount is back. Amrabat, I don't know if he played for Morocco. Um, I know Matt Mount wasn't in the England squad, so he... The players who stayed behind should have got a proper training in, you know what I mean, time together. There was a couple of players who didn't go because they had little niggles and stuff like that. So, But it's going to be a very interesting game. Um, let's so, what do you predict the score would be? I'll come back to you. Oh. oh, okay. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Can everyone hear me? Okay. Um, uh, 
I'm hoping for something like a two-one. We don't score many goals. We do concede. Um, so I'm thinking, if it's not two-one, it's gonna be three-two. Uh, you know, I'm hoping these guys win. You know, uh, I can't always be negative. Um, I'm gonna try and be a bit positive this time around. Um, I think we should have like a what you wanna call it, um, like a, a league table where we design um, instead, like for example, like for. Uh, in terms of like when we preview games, we can have like a, a score prediction sort of thing where we like we put each other in the league table. The one who finishes relegation, I don't know. We 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 have sort of like a, a, the one who finishes last in terms of getting the results right or wrong. Um, you know, we 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 I don't know. Like we we find something funny for them to do or something. You know, that would be interesting. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I think three two for me, two one or three two to Man United, and and it it's dependent. I don't know if he's gonna start with Mason Mount or he's going to. I don't know. But if we playing Bruno and, my, and Mason Mount guys um, in midfield tomorrow, we're gonna get absolutely better. So like, I hope he has learned his lesson in terms of that Tanakh. Um, we we be. Let's let's just hope that we we play a balanced team. I'm just hoping and I pray that he picks a balanced team. We have uh, Martinez obviously starting the game and then uh, getting off for um, Johnny Evans or you know Lindelof apparently. But yeah, so it's three two for me or two one. Yeah, this. Yeah, I think we will win it. Two uh, one. It will be a tight game, but I think we will win it. Um, I think we will uh, create a lot of chances, but um, the end product will uh, not be there. Um, I don't think we will see the same uh, Rasmus Hoylund as we did before the injury. It takes him a couple of games just to get started. Um, who will be the goal scorers? It's hard to, hard to say. Uh, McTominay and Bruno, maybe. Uh, Bruno scored against Sweden in the national break, so uh, maybe he will be up for it again. The captain's performance, we need it at the moment, so it's a game we need to win. Um, Garnacho, maybe he will be creating, but uh, I'm not confident in Rashford. The only thing that I can think of when it comes to Rashford is that uh, his, his place in the Euros is, is not uh, secured. Uh, Southgate said he wasn't... Uh, sure about Rashford so maybe that's the kick in the ass Rashford needs to uh, to start firing again and get his motivation because we know uh, Rashford he loves to play in the big tournaments and um, that will be a good thing if we can get Rashford in at the end of the season uh, performing as he did last year um so Rashford yeah how how do you think do you think he will uh, he will find this motivation and start playing good again it's up to him it's really up to him. I, I, I hope he does, because that means then Manchester United do well. I hope that he, he, he gets into gear and he starts scoring goals and starts playing better. Um, again, I, I thought in, against um, Liverpool, I thought that in the best 35 minutes we had, he, you know, he, he was the one who passed to Danacho, if I'm not mistaken, mm. for, for, the, for the Scott McTominay goal. He was the one who twice tried to set Scott McTominay. McTominay should have scored both times. So I see him less being less unselfish in that game, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Yeah. I thought he, he was a team player in that game. Of course, he missed chances, but he wasn't just looking to be greedy. I thought he was looking, look, looking to pick out people. Now, any, any United player uh, is a game that does not need any Manchester United to be motivated. It's a game against Liverpool. Yeah. You know what I mean? So... Will they go back to where they've been in against Brentford? We will know by tomorrow. We will definitely know by it. We'll be back here around half half ten, um, trying to maybe around eleven o'clock because I'm hosting a, a a show tomorrow with um, for a fundraiser for for Gaza. Um, so I'm going to watch the bits of the game here and there. So I'm relying on you, Jarvis, Lesso, mm -hmm. and hopefully Tom and maybe Bumbaye and the rest to really set me straight. Because I, I can watch it here and there, but I'm going to be, you know, um, I'm going to be uh, hosting an event for the Palestinian Front fundraiser tomorrow. 
big up to everybody in Manchester who's attending that as well. Yeah, mm. I see I see a draw. I can see 2-2, two, 1-1, two, one, one, or a 2-1 Manchester United. But what Manchester United is going to turn up? What much Manchester United is going to turn up? This has been this season, people. And it'll be like Manchester United to win a dramatic game like that against Manchester, against Liverpool and then to lose the next game. I remember under Jose, we beat somebody. I think it was Man City we beat. The next game at Old Trafford at home, we lost to 1-0 to Brentford. Sorry, uh, to, to to West Brom. Mm -hmm. I was there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. That's what I expect. But I'm going to move the conversation on. Um, big up to Sheikh Ariyan Rashid um, for the for the brilliant getting all the quotes. There we go. This is what I think about Ineos. You see it now. Uh, big up to the therapy army. We've called it all the BS PR. PR. Um, Manchester United and Newcastle are refusing to cooperate on a standoff over Dan Ashworth with both clubs planning summer transfer window without having a sporting director in place. You <laughs> United are adamant they will not meet the demands of 20 million in compensation with incoming CEO Omar Barada expect to take charge in negotiations in the interim. <laughs> oh my god. You know what? They are the gift that keeps giving. It's absolutely embarrassing. So they came in straight away. Oh my parada, look at this. Oof. And now, Jarvis and Lesso, I see United fans going, yo, that's right. They shouldn't bend us over. Nobody's taking advantage of us. The club is, I'm like, give over. Absolute the quarter sexuals. The twerkers, the twerters, twerter sexuals, gym sexuals, in your sexuals, are absolutely having a mare with their absolute changing, with their absolute changing the argument when it suits them, to suit them every time. At the end of the day, this is who Ineos have said they wanted. This is what they said. So it was to get a direct, was to get a CEO, and they, they promised, they came and said, we're going to get a new CEO. We're going to get a new fighting director. Um, CEO, yeah, working off his six months, mm. you know what I mean? However long it was when they got him. He's going to join us in the summer. Um, this has been going on for months now. It's absolutely embarrassing. So please, the quarter sectors, where are you? Come out of the woodwork. Jim, the Indian twerkers, where are you? Come out of the woodwork. I need you to explain to me. Why you said this is a change and we're being negative on this negative therapy, they said. Negative therapy. Where are you guys? All of you are silent telling me, yeah, we're not paying that much money. So why are you going so public then? Why are you going public without sorting it out in the background? Why are you going public? What has changed? You know what has not changed? It shows me nothing has changed. You know why you also sign up on the, on the, on the check still? On the money? Joe Glazer. And I told you lot from day dot. I told you lot from day dot. Joe Glazer ain't paying 20 million for a director of football. But Indios go and embarrass themselves. Let it be known what they're interested in. And I feel sorry, feel bad for him. I really feel bad for him because he instantly resigned his job from Newcastle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's embarrassing. If that's the guy you want, go and get it done quickly. But no, Man UFC, back to what we've been doing. Back to life, back to reality. Get that soul to soul, people. Get that soul to soul. You've been sold a lie about this Ineos business, people. And it's embarrassing the way it's playing out. Go ahead, Jarvis. Yeah, but the, the thing with, uh, with Ashford, Ashford is... Um... The longer it goes, the more leverage Newcastle has in the ne ne negotiations because Man United needs a director of football this summer because it's a big summer. We need everything in place. We can't trust the current regime. And, uh, and that's the thing. And Newcastle, they are, not, they are not dumb. They know this. So, of course, they will wait it out and, and uh, keep the pressure going. And, and uh, at the end, United just have to cave in. That's just the way it is. Um, but maybe we will get away with... 12, 13, 14 millions, 
whatever, you know, but we have to pay to get him back, to get him into the job. Um, Newcastle has nothing to lose. You know, he's on gardening leave. He's, he's no good for Newcastle at the moment. And, and it's their benefit just to keep him on gardening leave because he knows all the future transfer plans for Newcastle, all their targets this summer. So we had a lot, a lot of in, inside knowledge. And, and, and it can hurt Newcastle if we want to go for the same type of players. So in a way, Newcastle will tread carefully and uh, keep the leverage, keep the negotiation going and try to get as much money as possible. And if not, nah, why Why should they? Why should they cave in and just let him go for uh, 5 million or 6 million? Because it's not in their benefit, you know. And we know Newcastle, they don't need money. They have a lot of money. It, but, you know, it, it comes back to um, to FFP when it comes to Newcastle and spending money. But uh, that's another dis discussion. Um, yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. the whole thing around him, I see a lot of the United fan base. As soon as Southgate is linked to Manchester United, <laughs> everybody was like, yo, hold tight Dan Ashworth. <laughs> and then people are doing loads of research saying, did he really sign all the players at? Mm. It's the guy that really signed, the guy that signed a lot of the players, a lot of the players that he's credited to. He's, mm. he's sold players. But a lot of the players that they were signed at Brighton apparently were signed by the guy that's gone to Chelsea. Yeah, but no, 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 no. Newcastle, he, he's not, not Newcastle. he's not the guy who not signs Newcastle. players. Dan Ashford's role is is director of football. So he will be the link between the guy who will sign players, the yeah, manager, yeah. the so he will be, be no, no, connecting I everything. That. That's I his, that that his job. He's not the head of recruitment, but he, mm. he he directs the way Manchester United recruit, the philosophy, yeah. the strategy. But it was the guy who did a lot of the recruiting at Chelsea that's credited with the players that Brighton have signed. Mm, and then mm. there's also people saying, well, shouldn't you have known that that Tanali was going to get banned, you know, for buying him that much and then now he's got seven months banned. So at the end of the day, to me, what, what started this thing was the panic was the Southgate. Only going mm. to Southgate for Manchester. <laughs> and by the way, tonight, apparently, or to yesterday, there's a party for Dave Bresford, right? And Southgate was there as well. Wow. <laughs> if you know, you know. If you know the birthday celebrations of David Brailsford, Southgate is there. Big up to Ben. Big up to Ben. Always love for the super chat, bro. Big up the panel therapy army. Love from Ireland. Up the Irish. Up the Irish. Free Palestine. I'm Tagani, but Tanhag goes. So does the players. I can't have these shit plays. No, I 100% agree with you. 100% me and you are on the map. I'm not just Ten Hag out. I'm these players out as well. I'm not Ten Hag out per se. I think Ten Hag should go. I don't think he deserves to get another year because he doesn't make the substitutions. He doesn't use his squad. He doesn't believe in doing the work on the training ground and literally improving every player. He doesn't believe in that. He only believes in 14 players. And I think in this league, it's dangerous and it's wrong. Because you burnt players out. And the other thing is that he doesn't stick to play his own way that he wants to play. He's not the type of manager. I want a coach that dies by his decisions and his philosophy. And he's not mm. doing that. That's why he think at the end of the season, thank you so much, Eric Tarhag. Here's your 10 million. Terra. That's what I believe, me personally. But let's go. What are you thinking to that? Man, big up. Please smash a like on and smash a like. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed with Shadow Band, Free Palestine, Free Palestine. And big up to Ireland, by the way. Big up to Ireland joining South Africa to basically advocate for Palestine in the International Criminal Court. Big up. Go ahead, Leso. What are you thinking about um, Ashworth and Ineos? Back to reality, back to life. I mean, um, <laughs> I laughed when I saw this. Yes, uh, I actually saw this yesterday um, with regards to um, him partying with with <laughs> with um, with Man uh, United with Inyo's, uh chief. You know, um, it's 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 those rumors. You know, they're not just rumors. There's something that's going on behind, you know, in the background, and I feel like. The board has already made the, made that decision. I actually agree with with what Rent said um, the other time when he said, "I feel like the the board has already made a decision because, firstly, they see that it's not feasible for us to get into the Champions League, 
And I think they're going to do what they did to Van Gaal. You know, if Tanakh wins um, the FA Cup, he, he will still exit. They'll still get rid of him because he still doesn't have the Champions League spot. And, you know, they don't take kindly to losing that kind of money that they would, they would need, you know, um, especially with the FFP in place and everything. So it's, it's tough. It's tough. It's tough at the moment. I, I told you that I'm only going to... Um, I'm only going to judge these guys um, in what they do in the summer. And so, so far, it's not, the reading is not good. You know, it's, it's really not good for, from a, a fan's perspective. You know, look at the managers that we linked with. You know, I'd rather have Tanakh staying if that's the case. You can't, you can't go, you can't be, a, you can't be that bad to think that uh, Southgate is actually, is actually a manager that's good enough to coach Man United. You know, there's not even a top, a top uh, 12 or rather a team languishing in mid table would even look that in the direction of Southgate. None of them. So how is it good enough for Man United? So I, it all it all falls back to Ineos. What what is what is the plan with with with, with Man United? Because I, I've always been against this uh, my, uh, buying a stake in the club, whereas I wanted a full sale because I can't really um, get behind this thing of. Um, you know, buying 25% of the club and then you still have those guys in, in charge. You know, you still have Joe Glazer making the final decisions. You know, I, I, there's no way these guys have the, the full control. You can see it. Um, and, you know, running Nice as opposed to running Man United are two different uh, kettle, uh, kettle of fish. You know, so I've always had my doubts, but if th- that's they're seriously, seriously looking at this guy. I, I'm sorry, like I'm, I'm already in your house, if that's the case. You know, I'm gonna say it first. I'm I'm already them out because there's there is no way you can be that incompetent. You know, they might they may even be worse than the Glazers at this point because if you can have a if you can put stru- a structure and you still make the wrong decisions as as bad as that would be that appointment, then you are clearly worse than 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 the people that we want wanted out in the first place. So I'm I'm just hoping that these are just rumors and they actually have a strategy. You know, out of nowhere that we may actually get someone in who's much better. But I'd rather keep Tanakh. If this is the case, I'd rather keep because <clears throat> it doesn't make sense. And he still could, you know, if he wins an FA Cup and maybe, you know, finishes six or something, I still think um, he can he can get another season and they can phase him out that way, you know, without them having to even pay that 10 million and saying goodbye because I, I can't mm-hmm. stand Southgate coming here. I, I really can't. There's no one. There's no way you can actually justify that in, in any of the books. So, yeah. Yeah, big up. Yeah, big up. No, 100%. I mean, it'll be the biggest joke of the, of, 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 in the world if, if <laughs> we get Southgate, Oli Gunnar Southgate. I swear to you, I'd rather take Oli back than have Southgate yeah. as manager. I'd rather mm-hmm. get Oli back than have Southgate. And that's saying a lot, people. That's saying a lot. Big up to Susie. Susie said, Harry Potter, oh my God, what a joke. No, no, Harry Potter, they, they, they want bloody... Big up Susie. says, big up fifth can Champions League, I think now. Well, we, we're not going to know yet. We're not going to know yet. It's about the coefficient. So it depends how the, the team, the English teams who are left in European competition do. Um, so it'll depend on them how high they finish, if they get to finals, if they win the finals. It will all depend on them. Big up. Uh, get hands flip in Sage or Michel. Yeah. A lot of people yeah. have seen those type of names. I'd rather have those guys than have Southgate, hundred percent. But Jarvis, seriously, mm. when you think Southgate, Ole Gunnar Southgate to Manchester United, what are we thinking? Yeah, the, yeah, no, 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 no. He can't be the manager of Man United. He's not good enough. He's he's a mediocre manager at the best. And and how he kept his job at at the England national team, for me, that's that's a conundrum. You know that that a guy. Picking the same type of players, playing or not, in form or not, you could see him uh, in in the World Cup. He benched Rashford. Rashford was in his uh, in his best form ever, and and he kept him on the bench all the time. Why? You know, he has no eye for spotting a good footballer. That's the biggest problem. And he keep playing Harry Maguire in the national team, even though even in the times when he didn't even play for Man United. You know, was he the best centre back the, the, in England at the moment? No. So he has his favourites, and we all know manager who plays favourite the favourite game. 
never ends well. And that's that's one of the biggest problems. So I don't want Southgate nowhere near Man United. There's so many talented managers out there. Why would we go for a manager like him? It has to be... No, no, I, I, there's no explanation, no reason why we should pick him. I can't see it. No. Yeah, this is an interesting take from uh, Ramos. Says, Ramos says, maybe they put the Southgate rumors to convert Ten Hag out into the Hag in a... <laughs> oh, brilliant. Wow. Spinning plates. Spinning plates. Yeah. I think that is crazy. When you hear that, he, him and the Ineos lot are at David Brailsford's party. That's saying something, man. And the people are letting it go out there. Yeah, it's big up, Lila. I've not seen you in a while, bro. I hope you will. Big up, man. Big up to everybody. Big up, Chef Ariane. Big up to everybody. He says here, I... Para hate United will quit the club over the <laughs> oh god <laughs> big up to you uh Scousegate has no style of play uh let me just get this little super chat here big up dark dark it says let's not expect an hag masterclass tomorrow no we're not gonna accept that big no. up to you dark as I appreciate you super chat bro um yeah we're not expecting anything of that um yeah, I just think it's madness. I really think it's madness that uh, Ineos, for me, already the PR's worn off. So much PR. I'm mm. sick of the transfer window as well. Because one minute they're saying, oh, they've got money to spend. Next minute they don't have money to spend. They're using FFP as an excuse. But oh, honestly, it's a joke. They're an absolute joke, Manchester United. Mm. Um, so, yeah, we'll see all the... All, we'll, we'll see it all... Just the last couple of minutes, last maybe 10 minutes of the show. I just want to talk about Kobe Manu. Obviously, you saw him, um, let's say on Jarvis, you, you saw um, you saw um, Kobe uh, being picked, not being picked, and then picked from the, from the under-21s. And then he, obviously, I think the PR, I think he was picked to protect Southgate. Because the England fans are not happy. I don't know if you know how much the England fans are not happy. Honestly, they're not happy with him. They don't think he's the guy for England. Um, because England have got one of the most talented forwards, midfielders and attackers they've had in a long, long time. Um, and it's going to be very, very interesting to see what happens to in the Euros. But Kobe, for me... I don't want this England circus around him. I know all too well about, especially United players, because they have a, the, the name Manchester United comes with them and they have a high profile. You know what the media is like. They always have to link Manchester United with players. We always have to make the front page and the back pages. That's why we are, mm. because of the status and the, and the size of our Manchester United and the fan base and the global reach. But I know that the British media build people up to there to destroy them. That's what they do. And I do not want that for him. And I know that some United fans, if he, if he played badly, he's a young player, he's just having his breakout season. If he was to do what um, Ganacho did at times last season and have a couple of difficult games, he'll be trending on Twitter. I've watched this kid, I remember watching him in the youth, youth game when he was 14 years old, Jarvis. I knew how good this kid was. If you go on my Twitter, if you type in Manu, I was there talking about him. And then I had to stop myself and go, shit, I don't want to add to the overhype of this kid. I was I was saying, I can't wait till this kid's ready. I can't wait. We, I went mm. to the quarterfinals, the semifinals, and the final of the Youth Cup. Really watched him in games. And he stood out. His composure, the fact that he mm. could play as a holder for the youth team, he could play as a number eight, he could play as a number 10. That's what, that's what he's been. You know what I mean? And in the youth team at times, he played out wide. That's why he's got that quick feet to be able to take people on. And when I tell that to people, they're like, what? Yeah, in the youth team at times, he played out wide. He played on the left or he played on the right. Yeah. You know? that's the, yeah that, that's the, the thing with Maynou, he he's such a good footballer. I, I bet you he can play every role. He can even even, even be a goalkeeper if needed. You know, like yeah. he has he has good control, balance. And and when you see his, his stats and, and his attributes, he's... he's He's almost a little bit over fifty percent in in every category, and but he excels in in passing and and um, 
and the composure. That's that's his biggest attribute. But he's he's an overall fantastic good footballer. Um, but I agree when it comes to hyping young players. We all remember Man United, our history with um, what happened to. Yeah, we can we go far back. We can talk about George Best, for example. Yeah. And and we can we can go in in the recent history. Norman Whiteside, a little bit older. Uh, Lee Sharp, a little bit uh, lost focus. Ravel Ma Ma Morrison, that's a good Giggs. example. Giggs. Giggs. Sharp. And when you and when you talk about young players coming to England, uh, what stands out is is the Beckham uh, uh, incidents with the red card in the, the World Cup '98. Uh, what happened when he came back? That was that was dreadful. You know that he had uh, had to go through all of that as a young man. It's it's not a good thing. And we know the British press; they like to build it up, build up uh, people, and and break them down when they can. They make a story and and they just keep spinning on it. So I, if it was up to me, I wouldn't pick Maynu for the England national team at the moment. I think it's too soon because now we see the result, and and I just want Maynu to perform for Man United and Man United only because because now he needs to be our our uh, little jewel. You know, um, we yeah. need to protect him. We yeah. need to to he need to be our player, not England's player, because we know what comes with playing for Man United. All the rivaling fans, when he put the foot wrong, they will be at him right at the moment. Oh, he's not that good. Look at him, overhyped. Blah blah blah. They will try to tear him down at at, at first occasion possible. And this is the thing, you know. And he's a young man. He's eighteen years old. And and you know he's composed. He's composed on the pitch. He looks like he's he has his feet uh, on the ground. He's he's not uh, he's not believing the hype. But uh, you know it comes creeping in one ear all the time when everybody around you tells you how good you are. The money keeps keeps boiling uh, up on the bank account. Everybody offers you. Uh, every, the world is all for your feet. Everything is free. Diamonds and women and alcohol and parties. You get invited to everything. Suddenly you're you're the big hotshot, and that's the thing. He needs to be protected. He's 18 years old, and and uh, and now we just see the beginning. What will yeah. what, what will be the end of this? We don't know, but I just hope there's people around him that will protect him. That's the thing. You you know more about Maynu in Manchester and, and people who are around him, Nuruddin. So will they? Do you think? Yeah, I mean, his family are very down to earth, very humble, very lot of humility. Even him, his character is because of his upbringing. You know the way he is, how he mm. is. He's very calm, very collected. But he's a young guy. Of course, yeah. young people make mistakes. That's how we learn. But when you're in the spotlight, you're not allowed to make mistakes, and that's the hypocrisy of these media mm. moguls because they're not asked about. They don't care about the human being. They care about. The money it generates, the clicks it generates, that's what they care about. So they don't look at it as a human. They don't think, they think that when they were 18, they would make 19 when they would make mistakes. These are young men. So for me, I think, yeah, I think he's going to be fine. But like you said, Jarvis, if the whole bubble, then the England lot, I don't want him to go to the Euros. I really mm. don't. I want him to rest and be fresh for next season because next season will be tougher for him because next mm. season teams will work out this season how he's active, they'll study him and they'll 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 try to test him yeah. and he has to adapt and change and improve. Uh big up somebody here I, I think I might have got admirers out there. Somebody's asking if I'm sing if I'm single. <laughs> big up to CJ. <laughs> CJ I didn't know you were an admirer. Uh big up to you. Depends who's asking my friend. It all depends who's asking. That's that's the that's the answer. But big up <laughs> to you though but big up to all the admirers out here. You know what I mean? My mama told me that when I was uh, when I was young, she said, they're not all going to hate you. They're not all going to love you. So there we go. There we go. My mom's advice, always the best. Uh, big <laughs> up to everybody. Please smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. Let's so what are you thinking about this Kobe, Kobe, Manu, this hype over hyping? What do you think about this? I think it's very dangerous. And I think United fans would be the one that would be attacking him as well other than protecting him. Because I know what they like. Because they're so yeah. frustrated at this football club, they want to blame the youngsters. For me, I don't blame any of the youngsters. 
I blame the seasoned professionals who are out here in their mid twenties to to thirties who are absolutely stinking the place up. I do not. I'm always protective. One thing you will always know about me: I'm always super protective of young players because young players, you never know when it all clicks for them. You never know when they when I'm coach or a manager or somebody sees something in them for them to produce and become a brilliant players. But go ahead, bro. Um, with regards to him, man, um, that, that is why we always reiterated that it's very important to, um, to keep players like your, like the likes of Casemiro, um, Varane and all these guys, these, um, veterans, you know, to keep uh, a young player like that, uh, his feet on, on the ground, you know, um, it's very important. It's very vital to always have experienced players who led by example, who have been, uh, amazing professionals. Um, and so a player like that, man, in, in, in today's environment can easily, easily be exploited. You know, you look at the media, the way they don't, um, they build up a player just to turn down for clicks. It's a business, you know, it's a, it's, it's a business that, that has been ongoing, like for many, 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 many years, you know, um, you look at the, and, and, and people think that this started now. You know, you had your David Beckham time where David Beckham was also coming up. We, I saw that as 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 a youngster myself, um, watching David Beckham, you know, uh, coming on as a kid and then, you know, flourishing. Um, and the media was on his back. A lot of these players, the media was on their back. It's just that the difference was that Sir Alex had them protected. They also came in at around the time where, you know, um, they also had like, we, we, we also had a mixture of both uh, experienced players as well as, you know, uh, as well as a manager who understood how to bring players through. So, you know, we, do, we, do, we don't have that structure at the moment. We don't have that. And it's very vital to try and keep on, to keep um, what we have right now. Your likes of Johnny Evans, you know, I don't, I don't particularly want to build a future around someone like Johnny Evans, but it's good to have someone like Johnny Evans because he has played around the best players in the, in, 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 in the world, some of the best players in the world. So he knows what it takes to be a, a, a proper professional at a football club and his dedication shows that. So you keep your guys like Casemiro, you keep your guys like Varane, who are standard pro professionals. They don't have, I've never heard one or two or three things, you know, from these guys that they've went and they've misbehaved or they went against the manager or they did that. They've been proper professionals. They understood that football comes first. And you need guys like these to keep reminding these players who are coming through. And lastly, we also have to be careful in the new contract that we give them because I think that's not highlighted a lot. You know, um, we, we, we actually end up messing up a lot of players' mentalities by giving them uh, high wages very quickly. We need to gradually give him um, the right wages that is well suited for him as a player. At the moment, you know, I'm, I'm hearing quoting that they're trying to give him 80K. You can't be doing things like these and expecting that these players will, will stay the same. They're still human. Look at how we manage the likes of Cristiano Ronaldo and was coming. Look how we managed the likes of David Beck. You look at the way structure, how we were structuring around these youngsters. It played a it played a huge part as well, you know, in terms of them humbling themselves and keeping them hungry. So it's not just about people that you keep around, but it's also about how we um, actually, you know, gradually reward them and keep them hungry. You know, if you're giving uh, uh, Kobe Maino a, a lot of money too quickly. You know, he's going to obviously think he's going to become a, a bit complacent because, I mean, look, look how crazy it is right now. You know, um, he's, he's just been called for England. He played his first game. He started his first game. He's getting a new contract. Things are just moving. They, they're all becoming a, a little bit way too much. His name is out there. He's the new um, shiny toy now for the media and everything. So everything is all around him. His social media is blooming. So it's a lot. It's a whole lot. So you need to manage that, you know, um, firstly, by how much he's going to get. Secondly, um, the manager needs to try and also surround him with players. That will be good for to influence him in terms of um, going forward. So we need to be careful with these sort of things. And if we can get it right with him, we can get it right with, if, with the next players coming up, with the young players coming up, because we have been failing. 
we have been failing in terms of protecting our young players. Totally, totally get it. Mm -hmm. Like, he needs protection. Big up, uh, I'm not seeing you, the lads, and big up the lads, and Kobe is a baller, generational, uh, needs to be protected. The issue I have with him is that he chose England and not the nation, his parents. I understand it. Uh, but I understand his decision, yeah. Big up. So big up Craig as well, man. Up the Irish, man. Up the Irish. We love the Irish. Up the Irish. Um, Craig, I've, I've been busy moving. Big up, man. Listen, honestly, Jarvis, I don't know how you do it. Moving is one of the most stressful things that you can do in life. Oh, my God. I hope some of your friends helped. I hope some of your friends helped. Because it's yeah, just yeah, time yeah. you need friends and family to come and help you. My dad. But, my dad. My dad, he's, it's been fantastic. So big up, dad, for helping me. Big up, big up Jarvis is that the absolute warrior. Big up mm -hmm. the absolute Viking out here carrying the stuff with Jarvis. Listen, and the you know, you know, Nuruddin, Nuruddin, just, just to interrupt you, IKEA. Do you know IKEA? Flat yeah, yeah. packed IKEA stuff. Oh my God. I mean, I mean, with, with this Allen wrench in the last, last two, three days. Oh, I hate it. <laughs> and the manuals. It's, it's, it's you're trying to read the manuals. The I, I, yeah. Oh the my God. Sometimes the things that you need, especially the wooden bits, they make them longer or shorter. It's like, why the hell did you pack this? Because how am I supposed to have this table come together <laughs> tightly when one of the things is shorter than the others? Yeah. It's, honestly, I hate it as well. I hate yeah. it. Yeah. You know what I do, honestly? When I try to... I, I, I YouTube it. I go on YouTube because I am better not reading often because I'm dyslexic. I'm better seeing it. Mm. So I just YouTube it. <laughs> I always, I always try to, I always try to buy the things that's on display because yeah. that's already, already put it together. Mounted. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah put together, yeah. Big up, but honestly, it's one of the hardest things. But so big up, big up to your dad. And and the, and the thing with about moving people is that you don't need to unpack everything. Once you've moved, do it slowly. You know, mm. do it slowly, bit by bit. Nothing has to be perfect. You know, in the first month. You know, yeah. take your time. No stress. You're in, you got your bed sorted out, you got the couch sorted out, TV sorted out for the football, the beer mm. where it needs to be, the cold ones for Jarvis, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as you got that sorted out, you got to tell everybody in the house, come on, chill out. Yeah, but you, you don't know me, Nordin. I'm, I'm totally OCD. I like to have everything in place at once and I have no patience. So I've been working 24 seven the last week just to get everything in, wow. in place. Yeah. That's, That's, crazy, thing. <laughs> That's crazy. Listen, we'll let you go, man. Uh, we'll let you go. Um, age 10 years after my last move, I swear to God. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> the movie is, man. Big up, MK19, man. Big up. Big up. Big up to you. I hope you're well. I hope the exams are going well. I hope the studies are going well, Malcolm. Love and light. Um, Erin, do you still want Sebri? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do, because he's a coach, mate. He's not going to go, ah, no, he's going to coach the players. Yes, Nora. Uh, once a TV set is up, internet is running, everything has can wait. <laughs> yes. That's how I see it. But, yeah, some people are quite OCD, you know what I mean? They want everything to be done. Mm -hmm. But already, Jarvis, I missed the window, man. I used to be able to see what the light was, what the weather was like. There's no window out here. The new studio. You've already set up the new studio. <laughs> don't, don't tell anyone. <laughs> No new studio, so big up to you, Jarvis. Big up for sorting out the studio. Big up to Leso. Listen, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Like I said, I'm, I'm hosting an event. Sometimes there are things a bit more important than football, so I'm relying on Jarvis, Leso, and everybody else who's hopefully going to watch the game. Um, I'm co-hosting an event tomorrow in Manchester for to raise money for the people in Palestine. It's the least that we could do. It's the fucking least that we could do. People who are get, who are, who, who are getting genocided and, and starvation is being used as a tactic. So fuck Zionism. Fuck everybody who supports this rate of the apartheid racist state of Israel and its leaders. Fuck you. Yeah, and fuck your whole crew and your rocker label and everybody else, right? I say it and I say it straight. Humanity. We stand for the Palestinian humanity. We welcome you in all open arms. Anybody who's oppressed. If you stay silent, You've chosen a side of the oppressor. Simple. If you stay silent, you have chosen a side. 
please don't let me silence. The least that we could do is uplift and listen to hear Palestinian voices. So we'll be doing that tomorrow on an event, and I'll be keeping an eye on the game on my phone, hopefully. But big up. I stand with Russia. Well, you can do that if you want, drivers. Here, it's freedom here. Freedom expression here, man. Brentford, uh, not that far from me, love. Big up, Susie, yeah. Maybe you can get down there, Susie. Give them a bit of a pep talk before the game. Just tell them not to repeat the smashing that we got last season. 25 minutes, I think, we were 3-0 down. I completed the whole... Um, I comp I complained about the hole in the front of the defence. I saw mm. against Liverpool, our defence compressed into the middle where Liverpool couldn't get through. Yeah, that's what we need to do. We need to do that. Free Palestine, Congo, Sudan, free of all earth in silence. Yeah, free mm. Palestine. Yeah, fuck the CIA as well while we're there. Big up to everybody. Let's hope we get the win. And uh, yeah, protect Kobe. Any of you're a joke. Um, please let me thank my two guests tonight. Big up, Lesso. Lesso, last word of the show. Go ahead, bro. The last word. No, definitely, man. Um, 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 obviously, I would like to uh, offer my condolences in terms of uh, people who passed away in Russia. Um, we had uh, a sort of a meeting as well, um, part of the South African British Youth Association. So um, I'm kind of a member there. Um, so we had this meeting about it as well. Um, going forward and what what kind of thing we can do to support them, you know, going forward. But um, besides all of these things, man, I mean, there's, like we said, there's more important things in, in life than just football. And, you know, everyone, I'm just uh, wishing everyone to come out of all of this, you know, all in one piece. You know, um, we, 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 the world deserves to be a better place than what it is currently and we're gonna fight until we we, we eventually reach um that point of freedom and uh, a point of solidarity and everything so that's the most important thing uh, i just wanted to put that first secondly i'm hoping that man united do get the points that we need um you know i'm, I'm always gonna be behind the team you know us being um being uh, not wanting the manager being here and all these things it really doesn't matter. We still want the team doing well. If the manager can do well, I'll get behind him. You know, that's just how it is. And yeah, I'm just hoping that we win. And I'm not trying to hear this injury thing. Um, it's not going to work. They have their, their, their um, startup starting players all out as well. So you, you can't say that um, it's because of injuries that we don't win games. Um, and yeah, let's 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 hopefully get a win that we need. And yeah, um, big up to the panel uh, as usual. Uh, big up to the chat. Uh, get the likes up, guys. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, it's really, really, really uh, important that you do so. And yeah, let's let's see what how, what the results are for tomorrow, <laughs> or should I say today, since it's already the AMs. So yeah, big up to everyone. Big up to my brother Lesso, man, out there in the southern side of Africa. Big up to him. Love and light. Uh, Lesso, check out Lesso Football TV. And his Twitter handle is, those of you, his Twitter handle is the Black um, the Black Rain uh, Rensa. Is that what it is? The Black Rensa? Am I right? Uh, Black Rensa. This is his... This is your Twitter. Let me just go on there. Let me go on your Twitter. Um, there you go. Copy. Let me just copy. Um, let me put this on here. So hopefully it'll be for next time. Uh, go ahead, Jarvis. Your last contributions here to the. Yeah. Show. People get the likes up. You're on 69 likes. 69, dude. Hit that like. And after the show, go in the non-live section. Leave a comment. Uh, get your result in your prediction of the game uh, tomorrow against Brentford. Do you think we can win it? Or uh, will we uh, do a, uh, a usual Man United lose after a big game? My prediction, as, uh, as I said, 2-1 Man United. Yeah, big up. Big up, big up, Jarvis. Big up. Listen, make sure you check him out. 
Uh, Jarvis Corner on Man UFC Realist TV. That's usually on the Monday at 9. Monday. Uh, and then you can catch him at Bowley77. You can also catch Lesso on Twitter at Black Rainster um, at, at Twitter as well. So make sure you check yeah. him out. Hopefully these two will both be live here with us tomorrow for the match reaction. But love and light, people. Love and light. Look after yourselves. Look after each other. And um, we'll... Uh, yeah, I might. What I'll do, Jarvis, if you're available tomorrow around half ten, if you're available, mm. I might uh, set it up, and then you can go live, and I'll have it on my phone. But I'll take my charger with me so you can run the show. Well, I I need to do go on uh, MUC Release TV and do the do the match reaction afterwards. But we we'll go live right after the show. Oh we'll yeah, yeah. I'll go I'll, forty-five I'll minutes. So, so after uh, after the show is is done, I will I will come here. Okay. Uh, but I, I just want to give give a little shout. I forgot on it was the eight o'clock kickoff. I forgot it was the eight o'clock kickoff. I couldn't. Yeah, remember. yeah, yeah. yeah. Late one. But um, on Monday we have a special guest again on Jarvis's corner. We have a uh, ex Man United player, Phil Marsh. If you remember him, he played a couple of games in um, uh, 10, 15 years ago. Yeah, I think it was. Marsh, and yeah. he will come on, and uh, me and Stu Wally will uh, will have an interview with him and talk about old Man United times and. Uh, insights brilliant. so uh people tune in i'll be tuning in for that brilliant big up yeah. jarvis i tune in already anyway i just sometimes i'm out and about and i don't type in to say that i'm there but nah, I'm listening. that's okay i'm listening love and light people i'm on the bike sometimes jarvis after doing mm. two hours sat here doing on a monday show i try to get out afterwards well it is what it is but big up to you love and light oh yeah i forgot it's the eight o'clock kickoff yeah i thought it was a like five o'clock. I thought it was a five. Mm. It's not. It's an eight o'clock. I forget. And yeah, tomorrow, UK time is eight o'clock. The game, wherever you are. I don't know what time it's going to be, but peace, love, and light. Yeah, big up. Listen, hundred percent. Our total heart goes out to the people of Russia and the horrific attack that happened against them. Hundred percent. Do I believe the CIA are involved? Hundred percent. Do I believe the US is involved? Hundred percent. Who created ISIS? Who created Al Qaeda? Come on, people. Join the dots. Follow the money. Join the dots. If you know, you know. Big up. Take care, people. Free Palestine. Free Congo. Free Sudan. Free the Tigri. Free Ogadan. And F. Glazers, Jim, and his Ineos, and the quarter sexuals, and the twerkers can all do one. Good night, people. Love and light. Come on, United. Just, I hope... Please don't get embarrassed like we did last season. Please. No. <laughs> Take care.